every single day. And when your superstars have that approach, it elevates the play of the team. Yeah. Yeah. These guys, they love basketball, and this group has very much enjoyed getting after it practice after practice thus far in preparation for this season. Meanwhile, Washington on a 9-0 run here has made it a single-digit game. Kyrie Irving did not start this third quarter after he had a terrific first half with 18 points, four assists on seven of nine shooting. Avdia lines up to three and hits a 12-0 Washington run. And Steve Nash will take a timeout. And the Avdia, three of three from downtown. Dinwiddie, oh, nice grab from TLC. Squirts it out to Durant. Shooting practice in the corner, and TLC connects. And what we continue to see, and we saw this in the first half, just those extra passes and finding his teammates, and I think that's why it's so important, and we've seen it out of a multitude of players, but keep moving, making sure you're, you're finding that wake and you're finding the angles for them to deliver the passes to you, whether it's Durant, whether it's it's Kyrie we saw. We're going to see the same things with Dinwiddie, with a Levert. But find open areas on the floor, not only to keep it balanced, but you're going to get clean looks. Dinwiddie lobs it up, and Jordan. Did Jordan touch it or just go in, Sarah? I thought Jordan touched it. He did. Jordan did touch it. Brown got free for the slam. It looked like one of those alleys that almost didn't need a move, didn't it? <laughs> it did. It did. I don't. I don't know if that if that was the intention or not. Harris step back jumper rims out. 77-70 Brooklyn lead. Third quarter action. First preseason game for what should be a really fun season of Nets on. Yes. Bryant's nice work there. Bryant extending over Jordan. He's in double figures now. So he's knocking down three-point shots. We know he can run the floor. And he's shown ability to handle the ball, handle it in traffic. He's been active in trying to move his feet here on the defensive end. Be very mobile. And he, he's looked good so far. Two to shoot. TLC's going to have to get it off. He does not, and neither did Harris. Yes, it's a shot clock violation against Brooklyn. All right, so let's look at the play you're talking about. Dinwiddie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, that was a, a pinpoint perfect pass. And take a look. Everyone's focused on Kevin Durant. TLC along the baseline. I need some practice, a little rust on my telestrating skills <laughs> here at this point of the season. Did, did, you, did you get any lines out there or no? I got a circle of it. We also, I'm so grateful. We got a new telestrator last season, the beginning of last season. Yeah. So like a hundred years ago. And, um, <laughs> you're going to laugh at that. Yeah. Uh, but there, there are circles, there's lines, there's arrows, there's different things. So we'll get back to that. And more importantly, get back to this play. Well, Thomas Bryant was very upset about that call, but, um, that's a foul. Yeah. And for Bryant, it's number four. And that may have added to the the emotions toward it. So he's getting a, he, he's got a lot of opportunity to show show what he can do. And again, a defense and what he can do defensively is always something that this Washington staff has tried to ask more out of him. Um, and he's put he's putting in the effort here so far tonight. Jared Allen back into the game for Brooklyn as Durant checks out. 24 minutes for Kevin Durant. It is first action in 18 months. And Durant with 15 points, three rebounds, three assists, and two blocks. In the corner, that three is short from Winston. Another chance here for Washington. Hachimura left alone on the wing, buries the three. 
Hachimura now with 18 points. He's three of four from deep. And that's some excellent ball movement by the Wizards, finding the open man, to pitch, continuing to shift the defense, especially coming up with an extra possession. Nets did lead by 26 in the first half. Now a four-point game midway through this third quarter. And while wins and losses don't matter in the preseason, one for Steve Nash, and he spoke about this earlier, just if any time you step in the court, you're a competitor, you compete. Do you want to win? Yeah, but more of what they're striving for in the areas and the gaps they're looking to fill, uh, this, I think, will, will give them a good canvas and a good template of, of some of those things, just getting it in game action, but you want to sustain it throughout the course of the entire game. Allen didn't have enough on it, and Lopez secures it for Washington. We mentioned it before, but worth mentioning again, Karis LeVert not playing in this game for Brooklyn, has a bruise on his patella. Not thought to be serious, but no action tonight for Karis LeVert, who we saw take such incredible strides last season, especially his play in the bubble. It was just terrific. And Steve Nash was asked about whether or not LeVert would be in the starting lineup once he is back healthy, and he said, you know, it hasn't been determined yet, but I could see him also taking on the Manu Ginobili role, where he clearly is a starter, but he's going to impact the game more when he has the ball in his hands and can orchestrate the offense with that second unit for a couple different sections of the game. And then maybe be on the floor in those final minutes with the starters as Dinwiddie lays it in after Washington had tied it, erasing a 26-point deficit. And what a great luxury to have. And that goes back to the depth of the team, the multiple positions, how roles and how combinations in terms of your rotation fit best together and how you want to utilize players. And it's the understanding of sacrifice and doing everything that's best for the team. That doesn't mean you're not going to finish games. It doesn't mean things are set in stone, but just the options to be able to have to what works best for our team is something that I think Steve Nash and his coaching staff will continue to feel out, especially the early part of this season. My right, Dan Tony running the offense for his former point guard, Steve Nash. First. No. What? Well, it's Allen who is going to shoot free throws. Now, one of the things we'll have this season, and you all know, I mean, there are differences about broadcasts this season, and there are so many COVID-19 protocols, rightfully so, as we try and navigate this global pandemic still. Normally, we're right there courtside, and the officials can just communicate with us directly. We have to be off the floor, understandably so, this season, and so the officials will actually be able to communicate well, thus, and you, the audience, simultaneously when they go to the table this season. Via yeah, Mike, they can access, much like what you saw if you watched games in Orlando in the bubble. Lopez with three to shoot, did a dance. That's not legal in back. Continuity with the pick and roll, and how much Jared Allen. I think we continue to see. There's so many areas we see him improve. Some that you can see on a stat sheet, but more than anything, and I think we can credit some is he's been working with Amari Stoudemire. I mean, a variety of so many coaches, and he has throughout the course of the past couple of years. But the timing and timing the angles and the understanding with his ball handlers, where he can set things, how it makes it even more challenging for the defenders to try and do that. And the ball handler as well, setting things up for Jared Allen. He's done a really nice job of that here so far tonight. Shamit around the double screen, hits the three. Landry Shamit with his second three of the game he's now in double figures with 10 points and what a nice little play there and a great job by Landry Shaman just turning being ready to stop the pot Bonga hounded by Shaman 
Now it's Allen getting the assignment and fulfilling it with the rejection. It's going to be Brooklyn Ball. Taylor stepped out of bounds. Jared Allen, the timing that he has shown in his ability to protect the rim, moving his feet, staying with the play. See Allen with 300 blocks in his career. Tonight's, of course, not adding to that total with it being a preseason game. Shot clock turned off. Final seconds of the quarter. Johnson doesn't get the roll, and that'll do it for the third. Brooklyn takes a six-point lead into the fourth. Good mix. And Steve Nash has already joked that he thinks Mike D'Antoni is the favorite of everybody in the coaching room. <laughs> He's got such a wonderful personality and holding court. You know, I've wondered about this. You see Steve Nash is pulling down the mask just to shout an instruction. If you listen to NBA coaches speak, I already fear for their both of courts, okay? Long before the new protocols, I mean, NBA coaches, Tom Thibodeau, Doc you Rivers, the shining example. Yeah. I, I worry for them all the time. Now, with masks, I, I mean, I think they're, it, you have to obviously explain more to get through the mask. I think they're just going to have to talk less. I don't think they have a choice. Some players may appreciate it. I think they're, they're going to be very happy <laughs> about it. <laughs> Not all, but some. Neto flips that in. I mean, you hear the way Tom Thibodeau's voice is strained during a season as is. What's that going to sound like after six games with a mask? Tom's just going to have to talk less. For sure. Same thing with Doc. Wagner gets rejected by Allen. I think we saw a clip the other day of Luke Walton having pulled down his mask. Shamit hits another three. That looks good. Stay wide on the wing. Early offense for the net. And uh, C.J. McCollum told him, pull it back up. Put your mask on. Good Both old days. Dominant high school players at the same time. I don't think he wishes we were still back in high school. I wish we were still back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dwayne, we want you to know we'll happily take you here on Yes all season long. Please make sure you're tuning in. And Shamit leaves it short. Tyler Johnson quickly out of his hands, and he drains the three. Once again, the ball movement. We're seeing here with not just this group, but throughout the course of this game, making those extra passes. And it's going to be so important to continue to have that type of ball movement, finding the open man. Nice hesitation that time by Neto after Washington had been stymied quite a bit around the rim by Allen in recent possessions. Johnson. Threw it up wildly off the glass. Neto gets swarmed and swallowed up. He will shoot two. Uh, and that's a play where when you don't pick up the ball early in transition, and I think Landry Shamit was back in the basket waiting. Jared Allen was coming. Everyone spaced out because you have shooters on the wings. However, it allowed him. I feel bad now. Do you? you well, know, I put it out there because I was pumping up the jerseys. So now I feel like I'm asking for things, and we're still in the preseason. Well, the truth is, if I know I mean, our producer, that. Frank DeGrace, it may already have been in the works. As Prince hits the three, who does that? Paul O'Neill all the time on our <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's, that's where I learned it from. <laughs> We were talking about these players getting accustomed to playing without fans, who I know they sorely miss, we miss. Wagner hits the three. Um, how that may change, I mean, it's, it, it's going to be a fluid circumstance, obviously, everyone dealing with it, but it just also how uh, the variation for those who did play in the bubble. Wagner comes up with a steal and puts it down just the arena and the size as opposed to what it was for in the arenas and in the gyms in the bubble uh, but how that may affect help with shooting um, if that matters if it makes a difference there's a lot of things i'm curious to hear from it, it may vary player to player um, but from these teams these guys as they continue to go in the season i'm really curious to hear their thoughts on that and how it affects them and sometimes there's an element as we know of the energy and atmosphere 
in a building, um, but just in terms of, of play and, and how, you know, when we saw the, the really excellent shooting and some of the play in the bubble, uh, the question of how that was affected by the lack of fans, the lack of noise, the more sterile environment, if in some ways that may carry over into this season. Chris Chioza checking in for Brooklyn, along with the rookie Perry, who got minutes with the starters in the first half. TLC back in as well. Chioza wide open in the corner, hits the three. Chris Chioza was such a pleasant surprise for Brooklyn a season ago. Really influenced winning after ascending to their squad. Neto floats it in. And he played 10 games last year with this Washington team. He came over with the Nets, and you said it a, a need at that position, and he really had a lot of confidence, his ability to organize, his vision on the floor. We saw it just before the stoppage, and then we saw it in the bubble as well, as that'll go plus the foul, and a chance for three for Brown. As Reggie Perry gets in with the personal, Steve Nash doing a little coaching with Landry Shamit. And Nash said he's, he was curious to see just the sort of machinations of being in the chair, right? And just going through an NBA game as a head coach. How exactly are you orchestrating over there? It's obviously a completely new experience. And he noted the fact that, you know, he had visions or thoughts of the composure he may have in, in your intentions. But when you are a competitive person, sometimes you just don't know until you're going through it. <laughs> I was talking with Joe Harris about Steve Nash thus far, and, and Joe was singing Steve's praises, and he said that you know, one of the things that has connected so well is, he said, we have such a smart group. He said, that's the thing that stood out most to me about our players. We have a smart group, and Steve is just so smart and so confident in everything he delivers. And matter of fact, he said, there's not a lot of fluff. It's just so efficient of, hey, this is what we're doing. Not trying to hype you up. Boom, this is what we're going to get done. And we want to be a championship team. So if we want to, this is what we need to do. And that because of that, there's a real you know, respect from both sides. And uh, it makes it easier for you to execute it. Get one thing done and move forward. Wagner gets fouled and will shoot two. Valkyrie's been having his way of it getting to the basket. Let's have some of these other wizards. You know, the matter of stopping ball penetration and getting deep in the paint. It's been something that they've taken advantage of. But you're spot on when it comes to Steve Nash. And I think immediately, uh, in most all cases, it's hard to think of. But when you have a not only a player, a former player, but a Hall of Fame player, mm -hmm. immediately resonating with players because... He has been in your shoes and he has been there, but I also just think being his authentic, genuine self, how he's acting, what he's doing, that is who he is. And he has embodied a lot of things that he tries to teach and he tries to talk about. And you see some, <laughs> some of his credentials there and, uh, you know, only a small piece of really the amount of respect that these players have for him. Abdiya, the rookie, massaging his way in beautifully to finish. I'm excited to continue watching Abdiya. A lot to be excited about with him and could really make Washington an interesting team in the East this season. You combine Westbrook and Beal with the development of Achimura and Avdia, and then some of the complementary pieces that this team has with Bryant and then... Davis Bertans, Troy Brown, Shooter yeah, on the floor. Yeah, I think he's not forcing anything, but you see, he's got it. Kurutz hits his first attempt. First action for Rodion's Kurutz tonight. Yeah, he connects from three. Brooklyn now 13 of 26 from downtown at even 50 percent. Wagner guarded by Kurutz. This time, Wagner couldn't finish. Chioza pushing pace. Kurutz, nice look inside to Perry, who squeezes it in, plus the foul. Nice play. Starts with quick pass by 
Chioza getting it to Kuwitz, who could have had the shot, puts it on the floor, gets it to the middle. Perry is ready. And obviously, you see Matthews with his hand up there was a miscommunication or a breakdown on the defensive end, but just finding those open spots. And it's nice to see out of this. You could see why there's so many question marks when it comes to rotation, when it comes to personnel. And I think any season, you know, more than than any season, this season more than any season, you know, given the challenges that teams may face with COVID and with the pandemic and how you're handling that, uh, the benefits of having a deep roster certainly are so important. Um, but you can see when you start to look at these players and you mentioned getting their first run and, and getting their first opportunity to be in the game, Karis LeVert, not even being available here tonight. Nicholas Claxton, who we know will be an important part of this team, uh, but he is out with the right knee tendinopathy. Ten ten tendinopathy, is that the correct is that the correct term? Well, I, I, I think some choose to pronounce it slightly <laughs> differently, but but the, 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 the term is correct. How do, what do you say? Tendinopathy, I believe. Oh, okay. but, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you're a true partner that you didn't immediately correct me. I was still <laughs> waiting to. Well, that makes sense. You know, I was waiting to to unload Ansis Passesneaks, who just checked into the game for Washington out of yeah. The there you go. See, so we're each one for one. <laughs> we're each in preseason form. Let's just say that. Mm. Yeah. Passesneaks. Wow. Latvia. I yeah. wonder, do you, him and do you speak have a... Latvian or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, because... but I, I have been trying to learn different languages throughout the course of the quarantine. Oh, okay. I'm not going to disclose which ones or how how far I've gotten, but it's password protected. Which languages uh, you've been learning? La yeah, but Latvia. You, you immediately you think of uh, Romeo. Of course. You've been using. Uh... Duolingo or Rosetta Stone, or is there any app you want to give a shout out to, Sarah? Well, I'll give you Rosetta Stone. <laughs> and also the translation apps that you can put on your phone. Oh. I, I don't have the names for them. Interesting. Pass the sneaks. Finishes on the fall away. Possess sneaks. I've missed you, Bruce. Yeah. I've really missed you. Oh, Chioza with the handles, flips it up, and doesn't get the roll. Oh, that's going to be three free throws for Matthews. As Shamit undercut him and a chance for Washington to tie things up here. Shamit, similar to how guys play, you're coming over the top. And you know you don't want to get let this guy shoot. That's on the scouting report his biggest strength. Yet his momentum just takes it into. Good job by Garrison Matthews with the stop and realizing that he had Sham right in his hip and coming into him. Matthews, a two-way player, brings shooting range and hustle. Ended up playing in 18 games last season for Washington. Well, even if you look back in, throughout his college tenure, I mean, he shot over 41% from three last year, but every season in college, he improved his three-point shooting. And sometimes when you look at some numbers, they don't mean anything, but sometimes when you look at the areas where players are focusing or areas that they have strengthened their game, you see that in his. Washington takes the lead, their first lead since this was a 2 nothing game. The Nets built a 26-point lead in the second quarter. Washington had a big start to the third quarter, came out on a 12-0 run. And they've been able to hang around and whittle away and now take the lead as Brooklyn turns it over. The big stories of this game for Brooklyn, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. Durant on the floor for the first time in 552 days, scored 15 first half points. Got some additional minutes at the start of the third quarter, didn't score in those minutes, but two blocks, three rebounds, three assists as well for Durant. As it's gonna be Brooklyn ball here, and Irving, who played 17 minutes in the first half, none here in the second, 18 points, four assists, seven of nine shooting.
Gioza was grabbed from behind, and the Nets in the bonus. Free throws coming for Chris Chioza. Hey, tonight, after the game, catch Michael Grady's exclusive sit-down with Steve Nash as he chronicles the journey from his Canadian roots to NBA Hall of Famer to head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. Do not miss Steve Nash one-on-one -on -one tonight after the game, only on Yes. If you have not heard that conversation, you want to hear it. It is fantastic. It was excellent. And our Michael Grady always does an extraordinary job on things. But it was just such a delightful conversation because we learned so much more about Steve Nash as a person and different aspects of his background and of who he is. And I feel like that's always things that you want to know because... We watched him throughout the course of our life as a player and all of his talents, but it, it, it was really fun. Chioza in a crowd trying to find help. Did in Kuruts. And Kuruts loses it out of bounds. Basketball. You just see the depth that the Nets have. Chioza and Kuruts not getting into these final minutes. Same for Tyler Johnson. TLC, a key piece a season ago, will be looking to just scrape his way into the rotation. There's Perry, the rookie, firing from three to no avail. And these guys, I mean, these were the guys we saw in the bubble. These were a lot, I'm short of Reggie Perry. These were the players that we saw getting a bulk of the minutes in the bubble. We still have not seen Bruce Brown. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he's someone who you know, we've watched from his time in Detroit. He had a career high against the Nets, brings athleticism, make a rebound, great on the defensive end. Another guy who's at the back end of the roster, Jeremiah Martin, who played so well for Brooklyn yeah. in the bubble. And, of course, a big piece who we have not seen tonight, Karis LeVert, who has the seat right next to the coaches you see it is a socially distant bench with assigned seating so that you are occupying the same chair every time there's tlc's chair details he, yeah it's all about the details do you think we're gonna have the same chair every time too sarah with getting get it engraved yeah don't you have tape don't you have yeah tape yeah you just have tape now i'm not sure about the engraving. okay that's fair Johnson hustling back into the play, deflected it, and it's going to be Brooklyn ball. I just want to make sure Richard never sits in my seat. I don't think he's allowed to anymore because of COVID protocol, so. I hope not. <laughs> Maybe you'll share yours with Anya. Yeah. TLC swooping in and is fouled. He will shoot two as Matthews is called for the personal. We'll step aside, 2.56 to go in the preseason opener. Nets trailing by one. It's all of a sudden a game, no Kyrie, no Ky KD, but the Wizards are back in this thing after being down by as many as 26. Let's go back to Brooklyn. TLC hits the free throw. How about the Nets are shooting their 40th and 41st free throws of the night? Yeah, it hasn't been super clean. Seen some uh, some fouling. Yeah. Which you would expect. However, that's some, a part of it. Some preseason moments for all of us, I would all say, of Sarah. Us, all of us. I'm putting myself at the front of the line. And I'm cutting right in front of you. <laughs> Grady's been perfect, per the usual. That's just what he knows. Chioza comes up with a steal. Chioza can't get it to drop, but has another chance. Nice touch pass. Chioza to Kuruts for the finish. Gets back up by three. 2.24 to go in this fourth. A lot of the bubble all-stars for Brooklyn on the floor right now. That's going to be a travel called against Childs. Well, Chris Chioza has been getting after it on the defensive end, and that's just a heads-up play because he realizes... His matchup is out of the picture and has moved to the wing. He just picks the pocket and this group together. You, you mentioned the bubble bubble all-stars for this Nets group, but they have had a sense of, of continuity here in stretches. We saw Chioza, Tyler Johnson, Kuroots, TLC, all play well in the bubble for Brooklyn when they 
surprised everyone in the seeding games. Ended up the seventh seed. Childs missed it once, twice. The leaner won't go. TLC the rebound. And Brooklyn controls with 145 to go up three. Who roots a deep three? No. That jumper drops in for Winston. Cassius Winston, who Scott Brooks very high on. 53rd pick of this year's draft for Washington. Six at Michigan State, all time in scoring. First Big Ten, all time in assists. Perry amongst the trees gets fouled and is going to shoot a pair. So it'll be free throws number 42 and 43 for Brooklyn. Well, Reggie Perry, 6'8", 250, 20 years old, acquired from the Clippers, 57th overall pick. You know, he was 6'10", and they measured him without shoes, and he dropped to 6'8". Well, he wasn't actually 6'10". Yeah. And then left. He just That's a good point. He just yeah. took his shoes off. It's just with, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Factually, that's actually how it goes down. Yeah, that's, we, we talk about kind of like he actually he lost yeah. the did they? He's like, well, <laughs> no, that's a bummer though. I would feel that way. Yeah. I used to be listed as like five eleven, six foot. <laughs> this three is short. The follow won't go. Loose ball. Johnson has it with Brooklyn up one. Thirty eight seconds to go. This would have been a two-for-one opportunity for the Nets if they wanted it. Chioza takes and hits a bomb three from Chioza. A four-point Brooklyn lead as Chioza may have just sealed things for the Nets in this preseason opener. That won't drop. Perry the rebound. Now Washington is going to pressure some. Will they foul? And Brooklyn will take a timeout with 9.2 seconds remaining. The Nets a 118-114 lead in Kevin Durant's unofficial Nets debut. And Chris Chioza, some big winning plays down the stretch. And what a way to execute, not only just executing this two-for-one, but good work with Perry, creating those angles for the screen, getting off the shot, knocking down a big shot. I mean... Gets Winston really to get to the right and try and think that he may drive, and it gives him enough room to get off the space. You see, what's the reaction? Yeah. And, and that, Rooks, again, do, the, do these wins, do the wins and losses count in the preseason? No, but I think there's small details and small things. Add a little excitement, add some momentum. We talked about Kevin Durant's debut and Kyrie being back and this whole group, but to be able to potentially close this off with a win. Chioza having what he had done throughout the course of the bubble and just prior, it's, it's a, a feel-good addition to a team that's already feeling pretty good about the place they're at at this point. Kevin Durant talking things over with DeAndre Jordan, his close friend. We said everybody on this team has gravitated towards, you just kind of end up heading towards the voice of DeAndre, which is perhaps the loudest in that locker room. He knows how to keep things light, but you also know that he goes to work. And just that, I mean, that goes back to the veteran experience of understanding when to be businesslike, when to be serious, and then also when to try and loosen up your teammates. Chioza speeds away from getting fouled and now is with 5.5 seconds to go. And I don't know. I know Chris Chioza and Spencer Dinwiddie, of course, close and friends. I don't know if, if Chioza, similar to Dinwiddie, carries that same type of, uh, is it like a ven like a, a revenge factor against a former team? Mm. And I, I don't know if Chioza has any of these feelings in these moments, but for him. I think most guys have some you know, of that, right? How much it weighs on you, how much it adds to the chip on your shoulder. 
Irving and Durant looked excellent in the first half of this game. As Chioza hits the second free throw. Three seconds left. That heave will go, and that will do it. The Nets win their preseason opener, 119-114 the final. It's Steve Nash and Kevin Durant's unofficial Nets debut. Durant and Irving combined for 33 first-half points. Spencer Dinwiddie at 10.7 assists, 6 rebounds.